This video is for Unit 1.5 of the Carbon and Nitrogen Cycles. You discussed these carbon and nitrogen cycles a bit when you took sophomore biology, and so I'm hoping that most of this is a review for you. So I'm going to step through in this video kind of why we need carbon and nitrogen, why does it cycle through the atmosphere and the um, organisms and plants and the soil on the planet, but then also how it cycles through all of those processes. So, as I said, hopefully you remember most of this from when we studied it in biology, but if you have any questions, make sure to bring them up on the form. First question that we should ask ourselves is, why do we care about carbon and why do we care about nitrogen? Both of these elements have to cycle through the environment. They don't get used up, they just get reused and changed into different things. And as humans, we want to be concerned about what does that mean to us? So the first question, why carbon, right up here at the top, has to do with all these molecules that I have pictures of here. Uh, the molecules that you see here are DNA and lipids or fats, uh, glucose, which is a type of carbohydrate, and then finally a protein, which is made out of amino acids. Now these are what we call the four macromolecules, and we will talk more about these later on in the year. But basically they are essential to building us, to making who, us who we are. DNA we're very familiar with. Uh, fats and lipids uh, are mostly important because they are the cell membranes of all the cells of our bodies. But they also have other functions in our bodies, such as uh, different steroids, like cholesterol for example. They can also be found in um, different structures in plants, such as the waxy layer on their leaves. Glucose is our main energy molecule in humans, and so that is obviously really important to us. And then protein helps us to build structures and repair structures. Now, all of these different molecules have carbon as kind of the building backbone. So carbon is the backbone of these macromolecules. If we didn't have carbon, we wouldn't be able to make any of these structures. Uh, that is not spelled correctly. There we go. Alright, so backbone of all these macromolecules. Carbon links together really easily uh, to form chains, and that's why we can build so many different things out of them. The second question, why nitrogen? What does that have to do with these macromolecules? Well, among other things in our body, in particular, DNA and proteins have a lot of nitrogen in them. So again, we couldn't build these molecules if we didn't have nitrogen. So it is a direct concern to us as humans um, having these elements cycling through our different environments. Okay, the first cycle we're going to look at going to call the carbon-oxygen cycle. Now usually you'll see this in books, textbooks, is just the carbon cycle, but really it is all about carbon and oxygen cycling together because it's usually in the form of CO2 and a lot of these processes while releasing carbon also release or use oxygen, so we'll talk about them both. I'm going to start with carbon. We're going to trace the path of carbon in red. So up here we start with the carbon that we have in the atmosphere in the form of CO2 and it gets into the atmosphere through burning of fossil fuels. So right here have these fossil fuels and wood get burned. Those once living organisms contain carbon and now that carbon goes into the air. Another major way that carbon can get into the air is through something called cellular respiration. Remember, this is not breathing. This is simply making energy for the cell. Now, all types of organisms have to go through cellular respiration. Primary consumers, higher level consumers, so we're talking animals as well as bacteria. So decomposition creates carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and then plants also go through cellular respiration to put CO2 in the atmosphere. So there are all sorts of things that can move carbon dioxide into the air. Again, fossil fuels, decomposition, plants and animals going through respiration. There is only one thing that takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, and that is that process of photosynthesis. So plants are able to take carbon dioxide out of the air and put it into their tissues in the form of glucose. 
Remember that plants and animals can all decompose and their remains go into the soil. Those remains can go through decomposition and then be returned back to the soil or over millions of years under high heat and pressure they could be turned into fossil fuels. So that is the carbon cycle um, just in the perspective of carbon. Now we're going to take a look at the carbon cycle from the perspective of oxygen. So you'll recall that photosynthesis puts carbon dioxide or takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. But photosynthesis actually adds oxygen to the atmosphere. Um, cellular respiration puts CO2 into the air and it actually takes out oxygen from the air. So all of these plants and animals and bacteria will oftentimes use oxygen as well. So oxygen is kind of going the reverse direction of carbon in the carbon cycle. The one thing that this um, diagram does not show that I want to point out is that water plays a huge role in the carbon and oxygen cycle as well. So I'm just going to kind of draw in this pretend little lake here. What can happen is carbon dioxide and oxygen can cycle in and out of water. So like oceans and lakes and things like that can take both oxygen and carbon dioxide and dissolve them into the water. And if that carbon dioxide and oxygen is in the water, it doesn't necessarily stay there. It can also be re-released back into the atmosphere. So there's constantly cycling of oxygen and carbon dioxide in and out of water in the atmosphere as well. So that's not shown in this diagram, but it is a large portion of the carbon and oxygen cycle. All right, now on to the nitrogen cycle. So the nitrogen cycle is a little bit more dependent upon living organisms. So we know that respiration and photosynthesis take place in living organisms, but the nitrogen cycle has basically every step associated with living organisms. We're going to start at the top again with nitrogen in the air. The majority of the atmosphere, 70 some percent of the atmosphere, is nitrogen gas. But that nitrogen gas doesn't do us any good. We can't take that and make that into our DNA and proteins. Instead, as animals, we need to eat our nitrogen. So somehow that nitrogen has to get into plants. And how it does that is through these nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Okay? Nitrogen fixation is the process of bacteria that live on the roots of plants called legumes. They take the nitrogen out of the air they turn it into a usable form for plants and then the plants soak up that nitrogen. Legumes are things like alfalfa and beans and even some trees like alders can go through nitrogen fixation because they have those bacteria on their roots. So once the plants have the bacteria or have the nitrogen from the bacteria then the animal can eat the plants so whether it's this animal or this animal eating this plant or this plant over here now those um, nitrogen molecules can be made into amino acids and proteins in plants and animals because it's out of the atmosphere and in a form that they can use. Again, plants and animals die and it's turned into a different form of nitrogen called ammonia through decomposition. Nitrogen fixing bacteria in the soil can also make nitrogen directly into ammonia so they don't have to make it into the uh, nitrogen that plants use, they can also make it into ammonium. And then another type of bacteria can make that nitrogen into nitrates. Nitrates can also be used by plants as you can see here. Finally, those nitrates can be returned back into the atmosphere by a final type of bacteria called our denitrifying bacteria which can make nitrates into nitrogen gas once more, completing the cycle. So let's take a close look one more time at those different types of bacteria that are in the nitrogen cycle. So there's the nitrogen fixing bacteria found on the roots of legumes. There's nitrogen fixing bacteria found in the soil. So there's one, there's two, 
there are different types of nitrifying bacteria that can make ammonium into nitrates. So that's number three. And then there's a final category of bacteria called the denitrifying bacteria that can turn those nitrates into nitrogen gas, returning it into the air. So that's the uh, summary of the nitrogen cycle. Again, the important parts are that nitrogen gas in the atmosphere is not usable by plants and animals unless it's first fixed by those nitrogen-fixing bacteria on the roots of plants.